The Life and Sad Ending of Sarah Vaughan. Sarah Vaughan was born Sarah Lewis Vaughan on March 27, 1924, in Newark, New Jersey, USA. Possessor of one of the most wondrous voices of the 20th century, Sarah Vaughan ranked with Ellen Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday in the very top echelon of female jazz singers. She often gave the impression that with her wide range, perfectly controlled vibrato, and a wide expressive abilities, she could do anything she wanted with her voice. Although not all of her many recordings are essential, Sarah Vaughan's legacy as a performer and a recording artist will be very difficult to match in the future. Vaughan sang in church as a child and had extensive piano lessons from 1931 to 1939. She developed into a capable keyboardist. After she won an amateur contest at the Apollo Theater, she was hired for her Earl Hines big band as a singer and second vocalist. Unfortunately, the musician's recording strike kept her off recording during this period. When lifelong friend Billy Eckstein broke away to form his own orchestra, Vaughn joined him, making her recording debut. She loved being with Eckstein's orchestra, where she became influenced by a couple of his sidemen, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, both of whom she has always been with Hines during her stint. Vaughn was one of the first singers to fully incorporate bop phrasing into her singing and have the vocal chops to pull it off at a level of Parker and Gillespie. Other than a few months with John Kirby from 1945 to 1946, Sarah Vaughan spent the remainder of her career as a solo star. Although she looked a bit awkward in 1945, there was no denying her incredible voice. She made several early sessions for Continental, a December 31st, 1944 date highlighted by her vocal version of A Night in Tunisia, which was called Interlude, and a May 25th, 1945 session for that label that had Gillespie and Parker as sidemen. However, it was her 1946 to 48 selections for Music Craft that found her rapidly gaining maturity in adding bop oriented phrasing to popular songs. Signed to Columbia, where she recorded from 1949 to 53, Sassy continued to build on her popularity. Although some of those sessions were quite commercial, eight classic selections cut with Jimmy Jones's band during May 18th and 19th in 1950 showed that she could sing jazz with the best. During the 50s, Vaughn recorded middle-of-the-road pop material for orchestras for Mercury and the jazz dates for the label's subsidiary, Emercy. Later, record label associates, including Roulette in 1960 and 1964, back to Mercury in 63 to 67, and after a surprising four years off records mainstream. Through the years, Vaughn's voice deepened a bit, but never lost its power, flexibility, or range. She had a masterful scat singer and was able to outswing nearly everyone. Vaughn was with Norman Grand's Pablo label from 77 to 82, and only during her last few years did her recording career falter a bit, with only two forgettable efforts after 82. However, up until near the end, Vaughn remained a world traveler, singing and partying into the hours of the night with her miraculous voice staying in prime form. The majority of her recordings are currently available, including complete sets of the Mercury Emerson years, and Sarah Vaughn is as famous today as she was during her most active years. Vaughn was married three times to George Treadwell, Clyde Atkins, and Wayman Reed. Sarah Vaughan's desire to be a mother arose unable to bear children and adopted a baby girl, Deborah Louise, in 1961. In 1977, Vaughan ended her personal and professional relationship with Marshall Fisher. Although Fisher is occasionally referenced as Vaughan's third husband, they never were legally married. Vaughan began a relationship with Wayman Reed, a trumpet player 16 years her junior who was playing with the Count Bass Band. Reed joined her working trio as a musical director and trumpet player and became her third husband in 1978. In 1989, Vaughn's health began to decline, although she rarely revealed any hints of this in her performances. 
She canceled a series of engagements in Europe in 1989, citing the need to seek treatment for arthritis of the hand, although she was able to complete a series of performances in Japan. During a run of New York's Blue Note Jazz Club in 1989, she was diagnosed with lung cancer and was too ill to finish the last day of what would turn out to be her final series of public performances. Vaughn returned to her home in California to begin chemotherapy and spent her final months altering stays in the hospital and her home. She grew weary of the struggle and demanded to be taken home, where at the age of 66, she died on the evening of April 3, 1990, while watching Laker Girls, a television movie featuring her daughter. Her funeral was held at Mount Zion Baptist Church, 208 Broadway in Newark, New Jersey. Following the ceremony, a horse-drawn carriage transported her body to Glendale Cemetery in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Everything about her is her present memory. Please rest in peace. I still often listen to her good songs compared to her current state. Are you like me?